In this first case, we'll take a look at a normally functioning active site of an acetylcholinesterase enzyme. If you take a look on the left-hand side, you will note several phenylalanine groups. These phenylalanine groups consist of carbons that are uh, covalently bound to a benzene or aromatic ring. These benzene rings tend to be lipophilic and nonpolar, and they are rich in pi bonds. These pi bonds will tend to attract methyl groups, particularly the methyl groups of the uh, HC3 or CH3 groups of the acetylcholine molecule. If you look on the uh, right-hand side, you will see several uh, amino acid residues, serine, histidine, uh, glutamate residues. These residues tend to attract uh, the uh, other part, the, um, the acetyl part of the acetylcholine molecule. The acetylcholine molecule will now be introduced. You can see the uh, choline is attracted to the phenylalanines. Uh, while on the right-hand side, the acetyl group is attracted to the residues. Now that the acetylcholine molecule is uh, firmly planted in place at the active site, a series of electron-proton shuffling will occur. This shuffling will set up, ultimately, uh, for a hydrolysis reaction that will actually disassociate the acetylcholine molecule into a molecule of acetyl acetic acid and a choline group. Of particular importance is the fact uh, that the serine group is currently um, acetylated. If the serine group is acetylated by substances uh, like nerve agents, that will effectively render the cholinesterase enzyme um, inactive. Um, in the case of acetylcholine, however, the, uh, the bond between the acetyl group and the serine group is relatively unstable and has a natural propensity to um, degrade. And there's this natural pro propensity for the degradation of that bond that allows the, um, <clears throat> the acetylated group uh, to leave naturally.